Good evening. My name is Sean Webb. I'm the Director of Community Engagement and the Foundation for the Desert Sands Unified School District. We are here with an evening edition of Classroom Conversations, where we're calling it Going the Distance Webinar, where we're going to give information about the upcoming school year, uh, everything from Mike Kent, who is the uh, Director of Professional Development. He's here with his team, and they've got quite a lineup of things to talk about tonight. But uh, I'm going to just stop talking and I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Mike, why don't you share what's going on? All right. Thank you, Sean, for being here and supporting us. Um, welcome, parents. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I have a team of teachers, project facilitators, and instructional coaches that will be presenting with me tonight. So I'd like to introduce each one of them. I have uh, Carrie Penny, Meredith Greenwood, Veronica Amesqua. Julia Alberg Burbank, Brooke Triplett, Tony Frazier, and Kirsten Hill. So thank you for joining me. I also would like to thank Dina. Dina is here signing for us this evening. So Dina, thank you. And on the other end of the computer is Ray Kramer, who is interpreting Spanish for um, our parents of, um, that speak Spanish. So thank you to everyone and to the team. Yeah, that, you know what, I'll tell you right now, Mike, uh, you've got over 1,200 people watching, so I'm glad that you guys uh, made the opportunity to, for families to see this and so forth. It's, as you can see, they, they're they wanting to know some answers to some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take off some of the people off the screen. We're going to share our uh, presentation and we'll get started. Okay, let's just kind of remove some names here and remove some people from the screen. But as we're doing that, I want to make sure to mention that uh, the Desert Sands Unified School District mission statement for the Educational Foundation is that we uh, secure funding and award monies to provide supplemental resources that enrich and enhance uh, the educational environment for Desert Sands Unified School District students. And that our vision for the foundation is that I'm sorry, I'm trying to do a couple things at once here. <laughs> and our, our mission for the, uh, the vision for the foundation is to work with our community partners. And obviously, um, you know, uh, the school district is a major community partners of ours. So that's why we're here. And I want to make sure to thank the foundation board for providing this format. So Mr. Kent, I'm going to turn it over to you. Please walk us through the parent informational session. Uh, and now we're up to 1600 followers. Uh, All right. That does not include our Spanish family. So I'm, I'm kind of curious how many Ray has on his end. We'll have to check in later with him. All right, great. Thank you, Sean. And parents, because we're doing this live via YouTube, uh, you're unable to um, comment or ask questions. However, because we welcome your questions, we have provided a link where you can add your question and we'll try to answer them along the way if we can. If we cannot address them, just know we are creating an FAQ form um, that we'll post on the uh, district webpage under the parent information section and you'll be able to, um, to see those questions being answered there. So with that, uh, let's get started. And just so you know, the, uh, the link for the question is right there on the screen as we speak. It's go to bit.ly. Um, so it's right there at the bottom. And so, Mike, I do yeah. want to point out real quick with the bit.ly that everybody's watching, uh, almost 2,000 people are watching now, uh, that it is case sensitive. So make sure that you have the capitalizations and correct there and so forth. Okay. But, Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Um, the outcomes uh, for tonight's session are, you know, to paint a picture of what distance learning is going to look like for your child, uh, provide you some strategies to set your child up for success, and to share some technology information that will help you with this endeavor of distance learning. Um, here at Desert Sands, our mission, vision, and values are the very foundation of the work that we do. Our mission is to partner with you to inspire every student, every class, and every day. You know, we know that you have a choice to where you send your child to be educated, and we want Desert Sands to be that choice for all families. We're committed to successfully prepare your child for college, career, and life. And we will be doing this um, by modeling our core values, helping students to connect with one another, uh, showing kindness and respect, as well as supporting them academically, emotionally, behaviorally, and ensuring that all students have access to uh, best first instruction. So, at, you know, as you know, um, 
this is, I like this slide. You probably can't see it from where you're at, but at the top of the blue circle, there's this airplane that's moving throughout the the air, and there's uh, there's people on there trying to build the plane as it's moving through the air. And as you know, we went into a crisis response on March 13th, where you know when the pandemic hit, and like this picture shows. It's the same thing that we were going through. Teachers were learning how to teach virtually while school was still going on, just as like the plane was being built as it was moving through the air. So it was challenging, it was difficult. Um, you know, there were no attendance expectations, methods of instructions were different from site to site, and even sometimes from classroom to classroom. And we just wanna rest assured that that's not how distance learning will look as we start um, next week. Um, as an, as a, the yellow uh, circle shows and there's, you see a strategic plan and you see the airplane and all these people are, that are st strategically tackling that, that's what we've done this year. We strategically plan and equipped our teachers so that they can do this uh, successfully. And, and Mr. Kent, can I add that uh, I know that summer school was very successful as yep. well. Yep. And that they they're mo they were kind of like, I will hate to say it, but like the guinea pigs for this yeah. program. And we saw their success and we're just building on it. So I think yeah. it's fantastic that we're doing that. Exactly. Exactly, Sean. Thank you. And as many of you know, on June 29th, uh, Governor Newsom signed Senate Bill 98 into law. And this really set the structure and expectations for schools on how distance learning will look. And as we move forward, uh, we will be following those expectations. And I have those outlined here in the next slide, just so you know what to expect, what those ex expectations are as parents. Um, the first one, and if we can go to the next slide, that would be great. The first one is really, um, is we're gonna be providing uh, technology to our students. So tablets to our students that are in TK first grade, Chromebooks for grades two through 12. And, um, as well as access to internet. If families are having difficulty um, with the internet or not having internet, you know, please reach out to your school. We do have some MiFi devices, which, which are basically hotspots for your house um, that you can use for, for the internet so that you can, your child can be successful in getting online. So again, if you have any issues with that, please connect with your school and they can help and support you uh, with that. The other one is providing high quality instruction that are aligned to grade level standards, just like we saw in the traditional setting, doing that virtually. Providing support in um, the school schedule for those that need extra support and supporting our English language development students as well as meeting the needs of our students with disabilities. So all of those have been inten intentionally um, designed, our, our school schedules have been designed to be able to meet those needs throughout the day. As well as attendance and grading expectations, parents, you'll, you'll be seeing those and those will be coming out from your sites and uh, meeting the instructional minutes through synchronous and asynchronous instruction. So basically uh, live, live instruction with students face-to-face uh, -face via Zoom and then having that asynchronous instruction where uh, they will be doing some independent work. We've also, we're gonna be talking about this a little later on in the presentation, but uh, we have a, a learning platform called iReady where students can uh, use, can be doing reading and math online um, on their personal pathway. So again, we'll go into a little more detail with that in a few minutes. And one of the things that we, as Sean had kind of alluded to, we started this back at summer school um, mm -hmm. and it was really, what are the best practices that we can put in place as a district to support our students in distance learning? And they're, they're kind of in that little colorful design there. And the first one is really working and establishing norms and expectations with students. And that'll you know, be the first thing that we do, just like in the classroom, we have expectations, we have things that we expect of students, behavior and whatnot. At that time um, during the morning is really developed for doing those kinds of things during the day as well as uh, is just really building relationships with kids and connecting with them. It's so difficult in this virtual setting. So being just real intentional on what can we put in place through our, our live instruction where students connect and can still feel that um, those relationships are there. Along with um, engaging students, we've trained um, teachers on lots of tools that are gonna help them with student engagement and checking for understanding. How are we gonna assess students 
um, online, formally and informally, and giving and providing feedback to our students. So there's a lot of virtual tools that are out there, but really equipping our teachers on how to use those tools to do those things that they normally would do in the classroom, as well as communicating to our parents. So really just leveraging the curriculum and the instructional technology to enhance instruction is it was really our focus this year as we were training teachers. And I'll turn it over and Carrie's gonna go into a little bit more uh, detail about our professional development that was provided. So, Carrie. Thank you, Mike. Uh, as, as you said, uh, our, our educators over the summer have been working hard and uh, actually they've committed to distance learning. Uh, they uh, are preparing themselves, researching, uh, doing trainings over the summer um, to prepare for this unprecedented school year. Over the last week alone, our DSUSD educators have participated in over 4,000 hours collectively of professional development training. And um, they weren't even required to go back to work until August 17th. So I feel very confident in saying that we have all committed to going the distance with our parents and our students and all of our stakeholders. Hey, Carrie, I want to add, I, I participated with the Seesaw for elementary school yesterday, and I, I, I'll be honest, I thought I was at a model schools conference, and I, I hope I don't get in trouble by model schools by saying that, but <laughs> it, it was fantastic. The, the presentation was outstanding. Um, the presenter was great, and I could see that you had people in your teams, one that was answering comments and questions, one that was feeling doing the presentation like we're doing now, and it was very interactive. And the, the, the amazing thing I thought was Seesaw is the easeability for families and parents to be able to access their family, their students' work, and that was just Absolutely. fantastic to see that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Sean, I'll just add that um, we have some amazing educators in Desert Sands. And um, when we went into crisis mode, um, it caught us all off guard. But yeah. um, our, our teachers have uh, best practices and they have really committed to um, going the distance this summer and being prepared for the fall. Yeah, definitely. And if you could just go back to that one slide, I just want to point out something on that slide. Yeah, absolutely. The, the teach, so I had fun just playing around with the teacher toolkit that you guys made. And, uh, you know, it's been geez, 15 years since I was in the classroom. So it was great to kind of I'm thinking for my next classroom conversations, uh, you may see some added technology and so forth into our presentation. So uh, thank you for sharing that with all of us, not just the teachers and so forth. And I know that Veronica is going to come on to talk about this next slide here. So hello, and um, more on distance learning for this year. Teachers are really missing their students for many reasons. First and foremost, they're concerned about your child's education. We really are looking forward to seeing your child in virtual classes as we start distance learning next week. Please note, students will be graded on their work and assessments based on their content standards. Also, Attendance will be taken daily, so please make sure your, your child is ready each morning for new learning. Our teachers are working hard to build a classroom culture of fun and learning, and we really do not want your child to miss out. Uh, there will be diagnostic testing for the LPAC, iReady, and ST Math. A diagnostic testing is used solely for instructional information on your child. This type of testing helps teachers to guide their instruction and the needs of the students. The LPAC will be administered to all TK through 12th grade English learners who have not been reclassified. iReady is a K-12 online diagnostic tool for math and language arts. iReady has also an on-learning component for our kindergarten through eighth grade students. This will be helpful um, for uh, online learning because it helps them work at their own level. And uh, kindergartners will not have to take the fall diagnostic at this time. Specific details on dates and times for testing will be coming soon. And Veronica, I hate to interrupt you, but I, I'll say that I part of the trainings that you guys had this week, um, I've been in contact with Courtney, and I know that she's overseeing the numbers on that. With the iReady training alone, she said there was over a thousand registrations just for that portion. So yes. I think it's fantastic to see our teachers taking advantage of these opportunities. Absolutely. The and we had the everything. we had piloted for some schools last year. Yep. And so, um, you know, some of us who are part of the pilot have the experience now and we're ready to take it to that next level. And, and I'm so glad that um, the rest of the district will be coming on board. So it'll be great for our, all of our students. Yeah, definitely. And so now we're moving on to schedules. 
Uh, principals are now starting to share uh, schedules for distance learning and students will be provided with a daily or weekly schedule from your site's principal that will be routine and hopefully easy to follow for both students and parents. Please note that schedules are unique to each school site, so you have to make sure to look for information coming from your child's principal. Uh, the site principals will determine when all materials, consumables, and technology can be picked up for distance learning. And uh, all schedules will adhere to daily minutes as recommended by SB 98. So as you can see, um, in get grades uh, TK through kindergarten, they'll have recommended 180 daily minutes, whereas uh, grades one through three will have 230 daily minutes, and grades four through eight and nine through 12 will have 240 daily minutes, and our continuation students will have a recommended 100 daily, 180 daily minutes. So please do not be alarmed. Uh, your child will not be on a Zoom call for 250 minutes or 240 <laughs> minutes in one setting. Uh, your child will be working with our district adopter curriculum, both online and with consumables where it's appropriate in synchronous and asynchronous instruction. So there are those two words again, synchronous and asynchronous instruction. So synchronous instruction is learning that happens in real time where a group of students will engage in learning at the same time. Um, examples include Zoom meetings with a teacher, student teacher check-ins, online chats, um, there's review and feedback, um, things like that. Uh, asynchronous instruction is learning that occurs on, through online channels or platforms without real-time interactions. Uh, this type of instruction is self-directed and student self-paced. Uh, examples would include pre-watching instructional videos, uh, pre-reading content, homework or work assigned in Google Classroom, uh, seesaw, ed puzzles, uh, reviewing or preparing for synchronous learning, and so much more. Okay, and I, I'm going to mention this here, as I mentioned it when I was we did our Shadow Hills High School webinar the other night. I, I feel that with our schedule going synchronous, asynchronous, and having the schedules that we have for our students this way, it's very college oriented, and I love that we're starting this from for all of our students. And I know that with there's gonna be different levels at every grade level, and that just happens, but it's just fantastic that we have this opportunity for our students. Yeah, and a lot of our schools are avid schools, so that's what we really focus on is that college and career readiness. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Veronica. Thank and you. now we have Carrie back with us. Thank you, thanks, Veronica. Um, so this is about support services and uh, to put everybody's mind at ease about our English language learners, they will continue to receive support during distance learning. Teachers will be using the past LPAC scores and teacher observations to determine English uh, learners proficiency levels. And each site will work with their ELD teachers, that's their English language uh, designated teachers, and EL lead coordinator, district project facilitator, and site administrator to determine the best way to provide differentiated, designated, and integrated support for students. Uh, ELD or English language development time will be used to support the English language learners in speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And there will also be preparation for this year's LPAC the English Learner Proficiency Assessment for California as we continue to prepare for um, hopefully getting back to normal soon. Uh, for the special education, our district leaders in special education are working on ways to support families, students, teachers, and case managers through this challenging time in distance learning. The district is also working with the county to ensure that we meet state and federal standards in providing special education services. More information will be coming soon to help support families with upcoming IEPs, accommodations, and training. And also, the CPAC will be uh, hosting a parent training uh, this month on August 25th from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. And it's learning from home with a presenter, Beth Ohm. Uh, and so that will be uh, um, coming up uh, in the next couple weeks. And so I encourage our parents to tune in for that. 
I, you know what, I think that's fantastic that they're offering that with CPAC, and I'll definitely be in contact with them as well to see how I can assist them. But I, I want to point out that on Classroom Conversations, which usually airs on, the, on this uh, format on our uh, Facebook page, as well as on the Foundation YouTube page, I've been having teachers on to share what their school year is going to look like and share sample lessons. So next week, we actually have a special education teacher from Ford Elementary, uh, Christy Giroux, who's going to be on Thursday with us to go through her classroom and kind Kind of put her you know put kind of people at ease a little bit and we're, we're just going to have a quick conversation and she's going to share what a sample lesson looks like yeah so excellent um and the the other thing that i just wanted to um talk about is nutrition services i know we've had a lot of questions about uh, nutrition services and will they be continuing um, our summer service is completed at this time uh, however we're now moving to the national school lunch program so breakfast and lunch will continue to be provided on both Mondays and Wednesdays from 7.30 to 10 a.m. for pickup. Um, the pickups will be from each uh, student's site. And on Mondays, you will pick up two breakfasts and two lunches. And on Wednesdays, enough for the three days of uh, three breakfasts and three lunches. And details are actually site specific now. So please reach out to your individual sites for the exact location and details for picking up meals for your child from your child's school. However, parents who have uh, students at multiple sites will be allowed to pick up from one location. And so uh, that that will be um, helpful for those parents for sure. That, that's fantastic. And I'll tell you, one of our episodes of Classroom Conversations, we had Dan Capello on, the Director of Nutritional Services. And Carrie, do you have any clue how many meals they serve during the summer? Any idea? No, but I know, I know that there was uh, quite a few lines. <laughs> 1.6 million meals were served since March until the, the beginning of August to all of our families mm -hmm. in need. So, you know, Nutritional Services and their team are doing an amazing job. And I'm glad that you highlighted what's going on with that too. Definitely. And I believe we have Meredith who's going to come on to talk about virtual office hours. Carrie, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. So Desert Sands is committed to providing our students and families with the tools they need to succeed academically and socially. All school sites have built teacher office hours into the daily schedule to support ongoing communication with families. During these office hours, parents and students are encouraged to reach out to say hello, ask questions, review expectations, and gain distance learning strategies. Schedules and office hours are unique to each school site and will be given to parents before the start of school. And I'll be honest, I privy a little bit to that and I've seen some of the structures and so forth and I think it's gonna be fantastic for families to be able to check in with their teachers like this, schedule appointments via Zoom, Google Hangouts, you, you name it. And uh, it's definitely needed. And I think this goes right along the lines of uh, the college going environment that we're creating here in Desert Sands. And uh, we know that all students are gonna be able to be successful with this. I, I'm positive of it because of the, the hard team with the hard work we have going on. And yeah, fantastic. So I know that we now have some questions that are coming up. I'm gonna bring on Brooke and bring Mike back. Just have, we got Mike here coming on and we got Brooke and Meredith, thank you very much. Hi there, everybody. So I've been monitoring the chat and reading through the questions that many of you have been submitting. And so I wanted to bring a few up that seem to be coming up more than once. Um, and I believe that Mike and Sean can help us answer some of these. So the first question is, will you guys provide tutors for kids that need it? If there are willing tutors to do so, um, ones we don't have to pay for since some kids need that extra help since they're not in school. Mike, I believe you're muted. All right. Um, no problem. Thank you, Brooke. Yes, I can. Uh, one of the things that is unique to the schedules with distance learning, um, just so parents know, is that we have strategically designed um, periods of time for small group instruction. So a lot of we didn't have that luxury to do that in a traditional setting. So typically, um, when we had bonus learning time or extra time for students, it was after school because that was when we, you know when we could get to it. But we have strategically during the time of asynchronous learning when students are on their independent pathways, when they're working on their independent assignments, teachers will be pulling um, small groups of students to work with them to support them that way. Um, as we go through this distance learning model and we feel that's not enough, obviously we'll do that, that bonus learning time or that support 
for those students um, in an after school day setting. Uh, we just really want to be mindful that we're not wearing them out by being, you know, in, in school all day and then having to, to do that as well. So um, yes, we would like to provide that. And of course, AVID tutoring goes on as well with our middle school and, and our high school. So I hope that helps. Thanks, Mike. Okay, I have another question for you guys. So my second question is, my internet always acts up when my two kids are on it at the same time. They start to have issues and it happens every time with no fail. What can you do for that? We want families to know that we want to support them with the connectivity. And if they're having issues with that, to please reach out to the sites. Um, these are MiFi devices, which um, doesn't enhance the internet that's at home. It only helps to take the load off of the internet. That So for instance, if you have three students that are working at home, they're all on there and their net internet is weak, the, um, the MiFi will help support a device separate to take it off of the the um, internet connection at home so they can use that hotspot um, to connect other devices or two to three devices on that um, or one device or two devices on the MiFi and then the other device could be on the home depending on that but typically the connectivity on um, the the bandwidth at home is actually stronger than the the, the MiFi but the MiFi will help to take devices off of the the home. So again, if you're having that issue, please reach out to the school. We want to provide those two um, homes so that they can um, have that, that access. So. Okay. And I have uh, another question and that's what sports and after school programs will be offered. Okay. Um, I can tell you in regards to CIF and secondary, you know, with high school and so forth, we were fortunate enough to have coach Reese from, uh, La Quinta High School is their athletic director on with Classroom Conversations, and he shared that the traditional three seasons that we have for high school sports is now going to be condensed down to two seasons, and that the, with the hope that we'll be able to start sports in the middle of December. Um, that, that, that's obviously, it, it all depends on the county orders and so forth, and we'll get those directions from CIF, but that, that's exactly what um, what, what they're talking about. In regards to middle school sports, I did reach out to a couple of the middle school principals because uh, I saw the question. Um, no information at this time, as well as for elementary uh, after, after, school, after school activities, no information at this time. But for high school, CIF has already ruled on that and stated that. All right, okay. thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna continue to monitor this chat, but I believe we're gonna continue with our presentation at this time. Um, I think a lot of the questions I'm seeing will be answered as we finish our presentation. So if we can, oh, there we go. All right, so um, these are some distance learning parent or caretake, caretaker tips for you guys. There's a lot of things that teachers and administrators and staff are all doing uh, to design this distance learning experience but there are some things that you can do at home as well to help alleviate anxiety um, and set your family up for the best experience possible. Uh, so first, set up a designated space for distance learning. So choose a place in your home that you use consistently and routinely for distance learning. Make sure you have all your supplies in this area and that it's comfortable and it's organized. Second, create a family schedule with rules and norms. This is gonna help so that things are clear for you and for your kids and everything is laid out. Next, think about supports for yourself and your family. So neighbors, friends, extended family, they all provide different types of social and emotional supports. Lastly, the district has put together social and emotional resources. They can be found on the DSUSD website and they also are providing care counseling that's still being offered through the district for any families that would like to utilize it. Um, also, I just wanna point your attention to the tips that you see in the image on the slide. That slide is actually a resource sheet and it will be uh, available for you as a link in this presentation so that you guys can post it or display it somewhere or you can just keep it as a reference page for you and your family. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I believe Carrie's going to come back on. And Brooke, we'll see you later with some questions. Thanks. Let's see. And here we have Carrie coming up. Thank you, John. Um, so setting up a space uh, as a parent, this is probably um, 
something that I've been thinking about for the last few weeks on how to, with two children, um, two different grade levels, on how to figure out um, the best situation for them. And so while children are at home, it might feel meaningful to actually set up a designated organized space for their distance learning. This doesn't have to be a conventional classroom, nor does it have to have an office set up where you have a designated room or a separate room. You can set up distance learning in your kitchen or living room. Just focus on providing the basics, a clean space, which boasts a flat surface, comfortable seating, good lighting, and a place to store um, their course materials. Ideally, the dedicated space would be so that they wouldn't have to close everything up and move it away for um, having dinner that night, for instance. So uh, a space that they can uh, sit at and, and leave their stuff out, be able to go and take their break and come back and their stuff is still um, ready for them to dive into the work. And so um, the other thing is, is maintaining this rhythm. So as much as possible um, in this uh, critical ground technique, we are um, with social distancing, um, try to keep in mind that your child's bedroom is their, their, um, their sanctuary, their place to reflect and relax. And so try not to set their, their study space up um, for distance learning in their bedroom. That way then they can go to school in the living room and go home to their bedroom. It's also important to make sure that the noise um, is not an issue so that they can concentrate, especially when you have two children. So it might be beneficial to have headsets or headphones um, for both children, if you have uh, multiple children, so that it blocks out the noise of um, another child or sibling sitting beside them. Um, and having their materials in one place as a go-to for a family, so maybe setting up uh, materials with uh, scissors and colored pencils and markers and rulers and a calculator, those types of things in one place where all siblings know that those are where the um, materials will be kept and that where they can share those materials. And um, it's all about consistency, just keeping uh, the distance learning space consistent and knowing that there's uh, the, the play time, the rest time, and we definitely need that rest time in between um, coursework. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'm gonna bring Kirsten on and we'll see you in a little bit, Carrie. Thank you. So once you receive information from your school site, it's really important to create a general daily or weekly schedule for the whole family to see. So be sure to post it on large paper so it's visible to all. Add quiet zones so it reminds everyone in the family to be respectful during Zoom and work times. Make sure to add in break times and meal times and check-in times just to connect, reconnect, review assignments and reflect at the end of the day. Next. Writing a daily plan for each child is also essential. It's like a to-do list or a checklist that's unique for each child for every day. So this is different from the family's general schedule because this is a new plan. It combines every day the student's live meeting times for that day with identified to-do lists or assignments. So for example, a child may have a special small group time that day and a different assignment each day to add onto their daily plan. So this is a physical list. It's best written somewhere like your child's agenda, notebook, or small whiteboard so your child can check off daily tasks as they go along. So this is actually a great opportunity to encourage self-regulation, independence, and an opportunity to celebrate as your child checks off each to-do item and celebrate your child's progress on learning how to organize time. Well, excellent. Thank you very much. And now we're going to bring on Julia, who's going to be sharing. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Thank you. Thank you. So soft skills are life skills. They're important skills that don't necessarily get evaluated by pencil and paper tests, but rather in situations like the one we now find ourselves in. Patience, self-management, self-regulation, and self-awareness are soft skills that teachers, parents, caregivers, and students can all cultivate together. Remember to assume the best intentions of those with whom you interact each day. Offer patience and kindness to yourself and to those around you. Consider making a list of daily tasks for yourself and for your students. Celebrate when things get accomplished. 
develop a routine for keeping track of what exactly needs to be done, whether it's for today or for the week. And finally, be reflective. Ask yourself, ask your student, what went well today? What were our successes? What were our challenges? What could we do differently tomorrow? And if we aren't sure about something, who can we speak to? This is an opportunity to teach and model skills that will serve our students all of their lives. And Julia, you just went over some skills there that I think are just awesome that uh, all families right now, since we're all at home together, have been able <laughs> just to have those opportunities with their families. Um, yes. Uh, and I know I'm going off script here, so I'm sorry, but, <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> but, but I'll share that like my older brother, he has three children and they're all teenagers. And he said it wasn't until February that they actually sat down and had dinner together and probably a full year because they always right. have practices going on and so forth, but they were able to instill some of these soft skills. So yep, the gift of time. Exactly. We want to just yeah. continue to build that. Over you bet. And over. Definitely. Thanks, Thank you son. very much, Julia. We're going to have uh, Tori come on. So we're going to talk about creating a family routine, which is a strong support system to setting up your students for success. We're going to focus on two recommended routines to support high success that ties into the other setups that we've already discussed together. The first suggested routine is how to handle day to day situations. In schools, these are called norms and we as parents use them at home as well especially with everyone working from home together you want to know what when people can interrupt what noise levels are acceptable who's supposed to help a younger sibling and so forth we provided a sample norm link on here that you can look at at a later date on your own or you and your student can create your own sometimes ownership of your norms helps the student feel stronger and more attached to them the second routine that we recommend to, to help set your student up for success is having a morning routine. With this move to distance learning, sometimes we forget to follow our basic routines and when we're thrown off, our day feels like we never quite catch up. Students especially do well with daily routines since school is a supportive learning routine for them. Our recommendation is to set up a routine that works for your family. Again, we have some ideas here. For instance, my son and I, we go through our schedules for the day over breakfast and we rediscuss what to do if either of our Zoom sessions start glitching since we're both working from home. Then we check our tech together and we start our days. Setting up a routine with your family helps support success. One of the reasons I love working at Desert Sands and having my son in the Desert Sands family is because I know we here focus on making our students successful. That's why we're all on this webinar. Right. The next slide is gonna be on technology tidbits. So the technology tidbit slide, we're gonna go over briefly and then we're gonna click off onto another website. The first thing we're gonna discuss is Parent View. For those of you who are new to our site, Parent View is where you can get all of your students' um, information, grades, transcripts, classes, what's going on with them. You get emails through it as well. With our Parent View right now, Regis online registration will begin August 17th and go on until September 4th. That means when you log into Parent View, you'll get your registration forms and you'll fill them out so your student is registered for the year. If you do not have a, a Parent View account yet, you need to contact your school site and get the code and the directions for that school. And there's also links that we're going to go over on the um, DSUSD website that you can look at and look at the information too. But you want to make sure you have this. If you are getting a new student enrolled, such as from kindergarten or they're transferring over from a different district, please make sure you contact your school site as soon as possible because you will have to make an appointment to get your student enrolled and get their parent view and student view set up. The next link on here is Clever. Just to let you guys know, Clever is kind of the new one-stop sign-in shop for all of your students. It's on their Google. It's going to be one of their bookmarks at the top, and it's where they can access all of their information from iReady to their Google Classroom. There's going to be more information and more training going on, and we've also got links here where you can find out information in English and Spanish for your parent login to it. The next bit of information is the Google Waffle. 
a lot of you guys are probably familiar with it, but just so you guys know, we use Google Suites in our district. Um, our students learn how to use Google Classroom, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Websites. So maybe one of these days, if you get a chance, sit down with your student and have them walk you through a scavenger hunt of what is their Google Suites? What do they know how to do? We would, in fact, if you guys have your students make a scavenger hunt and someone wants to sh ship them over to Shadow Hills, we'd love to post them and show what our students did. It's one of my favorite things. So to have them walk through their classroom stuff. There's also study sync and benchmarks that are available in their Google Suites, which are for the English department, the math department, different um, ones that we use to teach. Just exciting information. Kindergarten through first grade will be receiving new tablets. And just to let you know that if your student's Chromebook is currently not working and or a, a, the student does not have one, contact your school. They'll put you through with how to check out a new one and bring back the old one. And as previously discussed, based on the question that was asked, MyFi devices will be handed out from your school. Again, you contact your school and let them know how many you need, what you need, et cetera. So we're going to take a quick trip over and click on the dsusd.us website link. So I, I have to point out with this, unfortunately, it does not allow you to go from a Google presentation unless we exit out of it and you actually go to the link, Carrie. So you'll have to get out of presentation mode from that and then actually physically share that link there. Uh, StreamYard is a little bit different than, um, than uh, Zoom and so forth. But while we're doing that, I, I'll go ahead and point out that uh, you're talking about information, Tony, that uh, is very valuable. And uh, I want to point out this is Tony's second time doing one of these webinars. We, we did this the other day at, with Shadow Hills High School. And with Shadow Hills High School, um, they did their webinar for well over an hour and they had 500 people following along. So that was pretty awesome. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up that screen so we can look at it. All right. So when you are on the Desert Sands Unified School District website, there's going to be, oh, I'll wait till it's bigger. There we go. There's going to be a blue bar across the top that you're going to want to click on, the For Parents tab. When you click on the For Parents tab, that's going to take you to all the amazing technology and stuff that we've been talking about. If you look at it at the beginning, we have our parent training sessions that we've been offering and been talking about, which we are so excited to have you guys here. It and goes down. I just want to point out that um, I, I want to apologize on behalf of changing the format. I, I'm the one that came in late to the game here, parents, in that uh, for those of you that went to the link on the website and then had to be re-diverted to this, um, we realized that we were going to have more than our subscription allows. So we made sure to make this available because I'll tell you, as, as you can see, we have over 2,600 people following right now. And it would have been unfortunate if we had some people not make this. So I, I will take full responsibility there. I'm sorry that the link did not get changed, but I'm glad that we were able to divert you there. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you. So if you scroll down, the important information you really want to see on here is familiarize yourself with the expectations for your students, but the meal application is on here. If you look at the meal application, you want to get that filled out, especially if your students are at the high school level. Um, being able to get a free and reduced price lunch means that your students get fee waivers and gets um, for college and for different things like AP testing, as et cetera. So just kind of be aware, make sure you fill that out. You'd be surprised. Um, if you do, I've had some people think they wouldn't be qualified and they do. Um, another thing on here is the Parent Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. You might want to take a look at it. It has some of the information of what's and what's going on. This is where you would find the link to Parent View as well. And for those of you who are new to Parent View, the account instructions. So you want to make sure that you are really paying attention to those, going through them and knowing what how to get your students information. There's QR codes if you want to download your phone apps. Okay. Wow. You know, I'll be honest, I haven't been fully through the website yet. This is all pretty amazing stuff here. They're doing a wonderful job putting all the four parents stuff together. It yeah. is wonderful. Um, um, so I 
Can I ask a quick question? Um, I, I got a text here from a family, and you know they just feel free to go ahead and text me direct on occasion, <laughs> right? Um, online registration for returning students doesn't start until Monday. Is is that correct? Those were the dates that I was given. I'm um, August seventeenth through September fourth. Okay. Okay. And from what I understand, it isn't open yet for returning students. No. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I just want to make sure because uh, that information was uh, very important to get out. Okay. So yes, I want it to is. Say we're going to, we're going to go ahead and bring the screen back up and I believe Mike is going to join us and Tori, thank you again. This is your second time on a webinar. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sure you've done plenty of webinars, but second time with desert sands, uh, foundation doing it. So thank you very much. And we have Mike back. All right, thank you, Sean. Just to kind of reiterate what you had mentioned earlier about the um, the link not being changed on the website, this presentation will be recorded and placed back up on that website at the very same spot that you logged on, or you, you know you've got this information. So if you came over a little late, you missed part of it, you know uh, we will have that recording uh, for you to go back and get that information that you might have missed. So again, we apologize for that. Um, our next steps. So what are our next steps? I just wanted to um, just assure you and many of you I'm sure already received or started to receive different kinds of communication from your, your principals and your sites and principals will be reaching out to families via all different methods. Um, you know, some schools do it differently in different ways. Some do all of them and, and it could look in the form of emails or websites, phone calls or social media like Twitter. Um, so, you know, just know that they will be uh, reaching out to you uh, before school begins to provide you on information such as welcome back message. Um, how are we going to pick up? How are you going to pick up materials for your for your child? Uh, teacher assignments, schedules, back to school nights. So we are in communication with principals and principals um, have already started. But if you haven't received certain things uh, that are on that list, know that they are coming. So just be prepared. Um, and the other thing too is we want to ensure that we are equipping our parents as much as possible with training as well. So on that um, that feedback form or those question forms that that link there, if there's any upcoming parent trainings that you would like to see us do, please let us know because we would love to design those for you. We are in the process right now to um, create some trainings for parents to help you with the different platforms from home. So when, you're, when your child's logging on or they're getting onto Zoom or navigating through Zoom or Google Classroom or Seesaw if you're in the elementary, um, we're, we're in the process of doing that and know that those should um, be coming out by the end of next week as far as the messaging on when those dates would be. But if there's anything else that um, you would like to see, let us know and we will um, be sure to help you in that in that sense so and, and mike i'll point out that i I'm, I'm very active on twitter and other sorts of social media all of our school sites are being very forthcoming with information and communicating out and a lot of them are already setting up their you know their welcome back messages their materials i saw materials being picked up at la quinta high today materials being picked up at uh, some of the other middle schools uh, i believe truman was doing it as well so uh, i know that a lot of them are doing uh, communication out so that's fantastic. So make sure you go to your district website or your school website and find out what their social media handles are as well. All right. Very important. Yeah. Thank you, and Sean. I, you got it. And I think Brooke is going to come on and she's got some more questions for us. All right. Okay. So um, I've pulled some of the questions that I'm seeing coming up quite frequently. So hopefully Mike uh, can answer some of these for us as well. So the first question is, will asynchronous learning need to be completed during regular school hours they'll have to parents will have to work on this on um, on the um expectations of the assignments a lot of times um, teachers will roll out assignments that would like they would like to have done prior to the day before or things that are going to be done possibly rolled out one day but not not turned until the end of the week so really that is a teacher specific question and um, as you, as we develop these parent uh, back to school nights, those would be great questions to ask your teacher because it will be different for every classroom as far as um, when things need to be complete. All right, and uh, here's another one. Will our kids have to be with us to pick up meals from the distribution sites? That is a great question. I believe that there has to be some form of uh, either student ID, 
you know what? I don't want to answer that because I don't know the answer fully. So let's put that on the the um, FAQ um, okay. list, and I will get the answer to that, and uh, we'll post that. So okay. I, I could definitely unless, speak. Unless you know, do you know? I, I yeah, I can speak okay. to that. I know that uh, Dan Capello is recommending that the students are with them, but uh, they want to have some form of ID for the students. So all, luckily, all of our students were issued IDs last year, so they could have those. As well as, it's pretty easy. You can also show like a parent view. You could show uh, information there. That's that's what they did over the summertime as well. Yeah. yeah. And Brooke, that's exactly what when we were passing out lunches either student ID or showing proof of student name on, on the parent view. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, and here's another question. Um, thank you for this informative webinar. Will gifted education and or honors classes remain part of the virtual school experience? Great question, Brooke. Yes, um, I think that, you know, a lot of things that we do, we need to not only provide supports for students that are um, having challenges or may need extra support in their learning. We also need to provide enrichment and opportunities for those students that need to be enriched. So yes, um, that those will be part of also small group instruction. It's not just for those those students that are at risk, but also opportunities for students to um, to be enriched in other ways. So it'll look different at different at different levels from elementary to middle school to high school. But we always um, are. Our goal is always to reach out all learners. All right, thanks, Mike. And this one, I believe we did go over it, but um, but just to confirm, um, this question is: How do parents receive these hotspots or the the MyFi's that were mentioned? Is there a list that they have to be on? Uh, the parents just simply need to contact the school, and the school will um, contact the district to get those. So, um, really, reaching out to um, the office staff or their teacher or whatever contact they can make at the school and, and then they will typically, uh, it's actually the media specialists and the librarian that are handling those. But I would say uh, definitely check in with the office staff and, and put in that request and somebody can get back to them. So. Okay, great. Um, and here's another one. Will there be an individual assessment for students to learn what their reading and math levels are? I'm sorry, Brooke, can you state that one more time? Yeah. Will there be an individual assessment for students to learn their reading and math levels? I believe they're talking about the diagnostic. Yeah, and, and yes, and that's one thing that's um, new to our district this year. We piloted it last year at several schools, um, and it's that's the purpose. The purpose of iReady Diagnostic is to, to give that diagnostic at the beginning of the school year to find out where students are with the grade level standards. And what's really uh, neat about this iReady and parents are gonna be really excited about it, and teachers as well, and they've been trained this week, is it has um, several components. And one of the components after the diagnosis, diagnostic is it will place a student where they're at on a pathway that they can work independently on their own. So if they're at grade level, it will enrich them. If they're not at, at grade level, it will support them and scaffold learning for them so that they, so that they can get to grade level. Um, so yes, it will be an ELA and math, and it's at all levels up to 11th grade, except for TK. Great. Um, and this, I, I believe we've gone over, but when will parents be able to receive their students' schedules? And that goes back to the, the question, um, the principals would be reaching out. Schedules were designed by the site principal along with the staff. So those are unique to each site. And so um, those will be rolled out, I would imagine, um, at different times, just because they are site specific, but principals will be sending that communication out. If they have not, it should be coming out shortly. Okay, um, and uh, I believe this can be our last question and then we'll wrap it up. Um, a lot of these questions we'll put on that frequently asked question page, um, and a lot of them are site specific, but this last one is what day will classes be starting? So let's make sure we, we all know what day classes will be starting. So classes will be starting on Wednesday, August 19th. We go. And just, to, just to go back to the MIFI, just wanted to stress that, you know, that really the MIFIs are intended for families that do not have any internet. 
no connectivity. So if they're having issues, if they have internet and they're having issues, they still need to seek out the site for some possibilities, but really uh, we, we don't have MiFi devices for every student right. in that sense that it's really designed for families that don't have um, Wi-Fi. But if you are having connecting problems, you know, we can work through those situations. So I'll tell you, being the director of community engagement, a lot of people have my cell phone number. So I've gotten a couple of the same texts over and over again, asking about Zoom meetings for high school students. They're wondering, will they get a new Zoom link every day from their teacher or will they just go ahead and have one set link to use? We are encouraging that it's a different link each time because okay. we don't want those links to be um, given out and, and compromise, uh, even though teachers have access to who comes in. Um, the recommendation through the training was that it would be a different one um, each time they log in, and that would be communicated to the student um, via their emails. Okay, perfect. And, then I, 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 yeah, and I did get uh, some information here about the school lunches and so forth. Uh, some some of our principals are watching, and they said uh, they will also have student rosters there, so they'll be, they'll be checking names off there in regards to picking up meals. And then lastly, uh, we want to stress that it's very, very important that all of the contact information, phone numbers, email addresses, and so forth are all up to date. So make sure you go into parent view to make sure that all is up to date. That is very, very imperative. That from the higher ups right now. <laughs> yeah, got to make sure to share that information. Yes. Well, um, I, I believe we're up to our hour here, Mike. Is there anything else that you you and your team would like to, to share? Brooke, thank you very much for all the questions. I greatly appreciate it. No, we just want to thank uh, all the parents for being here. Our, our hopes is that this was informative for you. That's how it was designed to just really give you information on how the school year is going to look at, while we're in distance learning. Let's hope that it's not a very long time, right? Um, but, and then also that, uh, some supports and some uh, that we can give you as as parents. So just know that we're going to continue to do this on an ongoing basis. Um, and we just appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be here. Know that we will be sifting. I, we, I believe we got through most of the questions. Some of them um, we, do, we don't have answers for. So we will be addressing those during the FAQs because we want to make sure that we are accurate on the, the information that we provide for that. So Okay, excellent, excellent. And I, I just want to point out, uh, one, this is the second time we've had one of our presentations in three languages, both English, sign language. Dina, thank you very much for doing everything that you're doing. Uh, and uh, we also have Ray in the background who's translating for our Spanish families. And I just want to send a little reminder. Um, we have classroom conversations that air every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Uh, this next week, we're going to have some teachers on with us. Like I said, we're going to have a special education teacher on with us on Thursday. But Tuesday, we have a La Quinta High uh, English teacher, Meredith Toffner Wheeler, is going to be joining us, as well as uh, we're actually going to do some more webinars for opening of schools, Mike. Uh, you'd be you'd be impressed that uh, these have these have hit off well. We're getting as as you're aware, we had over 2,700 people watching it now, and we've got 2,100 now watching and uh, Palm Desert Charter Middle is going to do something right before the school starts looking to high is going to have their welcome video on live and I know that we're going to have some other schools scheduled so got a full week of webinars full of the week of uh, YouTube lives and everything but you know what it's all about getting the information out to families because we know they have questions and Sean another thing too I know there were some questions regarding um, if there were some issues with attendance or being not to be able to make a meet and, and and really what communication is key so that's what the whole purpose is of virtual um the virtual hours are the virtual sorry the um i just lost it the um the times that that the uh, parents or the teachers have open the office hours thank you there's a word um, it's getting late, right? Office yeah. hours um, is really the is the per, is the place for that. So if you're having a difficult time in any situation, please reach out to um, your child's teacher 
through that time, that office hours. That's what it's designed for is, is really that communication and keeping the teacher informed um, if there's anything that comes up along the way. So Most definitely. Yeah, communication is key. I completely agree with that. And uh, with that being said, we're coming up on our hour. I want to say, Mike, thank you to you and your team. You guys have done an outstanding job from the PD going on this whole week and everything that's been going on behind the scenes this summer. I know that uh, everybody's been working really hard. And as I have it flashing along the bottom there, you guys exemplify that. DSUSD, we got this. So I agree with that completely. Thank you very much. Good and, night, everyone. Yeah, good night, everyone. To our viewers, thank you for watching. And make sure to uh, tune in to uh, be a subscriber of the YouTube station for Desert Sands Unified School District. Follow us on social media. Follow the foundation. Because if you, you follow us, you're going to see a lot of information coming your way. Well, have a good night. Thank you, guys. Okay, the live.